on the list what else we have here? oh we have this interesting news courtesy of the guardian it says trump says he will sue trump says he will sue he will sue social media giants over censorship which makes complete sense computer so like, say what you want about the guy's presidency obviously a car crash right um obviously the most you know it's easy to say you know easy to say it's not a stretch to say that he is probably the most unpresidential president in the history of world in the history of the world let alone american politics so um it's no surprise that he's been able to kind of garner such a negative reaction like it's interesting right because he's like quite clearly extremely unlikable but also he has that he has that kind of quintessential um ingredients that you need to be a superstar right to be a flipping a household name in some regard right you need to have you need to have an audience split 50 50 half of which love you and half of which hate your guts and want you to essentially die right and that's what essentially he was able to encapsulate and you don't really see that often with i would say political figures like people actually wanting that person to you know catch a stray somewhere or whatever like people really especially if you're on the left they really really hated trump like everything he stood for they just hated him from his family you know ivanka trump was getting it left around center from people the kid that's super lanky that doesn't speak was getting it um you know what's her name the wife was getting it too like everyone attached to trump was just completely hated like you standed you stood next to him you endorsed him you shook his hand immediately people kind of had daggers for you and one you should drop dead and die so um yeah obviously not not the not not the most uh charismatic not the most um what you call it unifying president of all time but it also did seem weird to me from the outside perspective looking in how it was how somehow not how somehow how somehow it doesn't make sense but it did seem weird to me from the outside looking in um how it was a how, how they just allowed all these tech platforms and these social media apps to just ban him from the public conversation whilst he was a sitting president fair enough once he gets you know um beaten on the elections and then you know you can somehow maybe use that as a reason or as an explanation as to why you decided to deplatform him blah 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 but imagine living in a world where all the social media apps and platforms decide collectively behind closed doors they don't obviously admit it to one by one ban you from their platforms permanently which is in fact especially nowadays you're essentially removing that person from the public conversation and you would imagine if you're somebody who's a politician it's like it goes beyond the rules and remits of a social media platform and it goes into kind of the benefit of the greater good right of, your, of the citizens in general to have you have your voice on those platforms so you can speak directly to your constituents or whatever it may be right it just seems so strange that that was allowed that that was kind of everyone's fine with it because they hated the guy so much it's just such a bizarre thing and i don't think it's going to be ever repeated again because again i think you know he was just uniquely hateable in that way but um it did seem like a very foolhardly thing to do because something like this was always going to come over the horizon and there's one thing about trump he's going to be able to garner his base he's going to be able to use his resources and networks in order to kind of run this court case all the way to, into the ground like he's going to he's going to be um relentless with this because this is his one time to come back into the public conversation to do the press runs interviews and all that stuff and if eventually this leads to a major overhaul into how tech platforms approach censorship and approach banning certain people this is going to be a major win but the only thing I'd say about this is a little bit bothers bothersome um, would be it's hard to really celebrate this if you're a Trump fan because he was in power and he was in office and he did nothing, nothing to curb censorship, nothing to tackle it. Um, he didn't really put up much of a fight when he was in, you know, when he was enjoying all the perks of it. And the moment it got taken away from him, and suddenly now he's becoming a free speech advocate. And I think it's a little bit um, too late personally um i think again you know especially with biden in power um they've got who they wanted into the white house kamala's obviously next up if biden becomes um you know uh incapable of fulfilling his role as president let's say so i just don't see this going well for him but i understand the frustration that must exist if you are a conservative living in the states um it must feel a little bit like there's one rule for us and one rule for them 
Like you can't get away. For, imagine a conservative saying what some of the people on the left wing say on Twitter and stuff about certain people, about whites in general and stuff. Imagine them saying that same thing. You would get absolutely ridic you know ridic well you get ridiculed and you'd probably get banned forever um they don't really take too kindly to um um right wing talk fi well right wing figures and some of the more kind of extreme points of view that they have and again it's not really to say one's good or bad but i just think if you're going to allow people to say you know all cops are bastards on social media you have to also allow the opposite side of things um you know i don't i don't enjoy either extreme but you have to allow it if you go that way down the tunnel best read the article itself this is the following Donald Trump, the former United States president, held a rambling press conference. I love how the Guardian says this. Um, on Wednesday to announce legal action against Facebook, Twitter and Google, accusing the text giants of censorship, conservatives, censoring, sorry, conservative voices. Trump was once an era... Um, um, irrepressible agenda setting force on social media but in the wake of the 6th of January insurrection he was banned from Twitter and suspended from Facebook until at least 2023 because of the risk of infecting inciting further violence we are asking the US District Attorney um, Southern District of Florida to order immediate hold of social media companies illegal okay let's actually play the video of what he actually said okay, it's actually quite funny how he pronounces the name Sunder Pachai <laughs> but let's hear what Trump has to say about the whole thing today in conjunction with the America First Policy Institute, I'm filing as the lead class representative a major class action lawsuit against the big tech giants, including Facebook, Google, and Twitter, as well as their CEOs, Mark Zuckerberg, Sundar Puche, and <laughs> Jack Dorsey. Three real nice guys. Let's, let's go that again. Let's do that again. Mark Zuckerberg. Sunder Puche, Zuckerberg, Sunder Puche, and um, Jack Dorsey. But it's true, but think about it, right? Have you, like, it's the 6th of January, right? So it's obviously, it's been a long time. But he's essentially been removed from the public conversation. Like you don't even hear what is, you don't even know what he's thinking, what he's up, what he's up, when he's, what he's kind of up to. Where he started that weird, what was it like a like a live journal blog thing that he was doing, and I think he kind of sacked that off because of you know, more more than likely no one was checking it out, and it was probably costing too much money to keep up, and it was probably more beneficial to just talk. Like if you're going to try to get yourself into the public conversation, like you know, this is probably a better route to go about. Yes, it's going to cost you probably way more money, especially when you consider how many lawyers he's going to have dealing with this and how much is they're going to be billing him per hour. They're going to be kind of rubbing their hands, Birdman style, to kind of make sure they're cashing on that one. But yeah, man, like censorship and deplatforming legitimately works because this guy is basically invisible. Like if he died tomorrow, no one would like, not die tomorrow, but he, he, he might as well be dead at this point. That's why he's not, you know, like, and for someone like himself, who obviously is obsessed with how he looks in the media and having a voice on social and opining on cultural topics and stuff. It must be, it must be hell on earth to be, to be at home on a flipping burner account saying crazy stuff, but you're not garnering the same level of reaction because, you know, it's just not your same account as it was prior. It's, it's not the same account that you had prior, of course. Um, it continues to say that we're demanding an end to shadow banning, a stop to silencing, a stop to blacklisting, banishing, cancelling, that you know very well. Um, our case will prove that the censorship is unlawful, it's unconstitutional, and it's completely un-American. We all know that. We all know that very, very well. And... Um, so the complaints of the Silicon Valley censorship have become a familiar talking point for the political right, but many of the popular, most popular personalities on the site, such as Facebook conservatives, okay, they're saying some of the popular conservatives, let's do it again, I'm trying to rush here, I'm mumbling my words. Let's say, it says here, complaints, complaints of Silicon Valley censorship have become a familiar talking point on the political right, but many of the most popular personalities on site, such as Facebook, are conservatives, such as Dan Bongino, and Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro, I don't know who Ben Bongino is. So there, there is some point credence to it, but I just mean more so in terms of like the things people say and what you're allowed to do and what you're allowed to post. There's obviously a different criteria for banning and suspending that is given to people on the right and to or as as opposed to what's going on, on the left. Now you could say maybe it's because the things that people on the right talk about are probably a little bit more hot buttony, racier topics. So maybe there's a little bit more room 
for you to say the craziest there's a there's probably more chance of you saying crazy shit if you're somebody on the right because of the talking points and the things that you basically feel passionate about who knows like immigration and all that sort of things you know you can you can quite quickly upset a whole sort of people very very fast if you start to get into all that kind of stuff um but by and large it would be nice to live in a society where people just can just go free willy and just say what they want on social um without having like i'm all for like imagine if you've got loads of brand sponsorships and stuff and they don't maybe politically align with some of your beliefs if you're a conservative and they decide to drop you i think that's cool i don't think you can complain if you're sponsored by fucking pepsi and you come out with some anti-immigration statement and they decide to pull the sponsorship from you you know what the game is it is what it is it's unfortunate but you know they're not doing it from a moral or ethical standpoint they're just doing it more so to make sure that they protect their bottom dollar but what i'm not a fan of is these platforms deciding who gets a voice and who can speak who can say what um who can attack who that's just not what i like it's kind of selective in terms of allowing people to how they function on these platforms so it'd just be nice if the platforms themselves could just be a bit more hands-off obviously allow people to post stuff that they want within reason and then it's up to the audience it's up to the listeners up to the viewers up to the people who are on those sites to decide what they want to amplify do you want to follow this person do you want to give that person a retweet do you want to amplify this person's voice and then you go that way because i just i just don't know i, I just don't like the platform deciding it because it feels a little bit like the music industry when the music industry can blackball an artist and basically prevent you from making any headway in your career because they decided that you are a person a persona non grata and i just don't think that is a fair way to go about things and you know the kind of usual response or pushback would be like oh okay cool go and make your own thing but they tried didn't it they tried to make their own thing didn't they they got gab that got you know that went through its issues parlor of course they had recently the conservatives they tried to do that and that of course then had its issues and i think um didn't they take down the host site or whatever that was hosting parlor and then it got taken down and then the app store said they wouldn't allow it back up until they changed certain things like you can only go so far in doing your own thing before the powers that be because unfortunately the main kind of you know people that handle those things such as amazon and google they're obviously political leanings are swayed to a certain side mostly left but they also control all the cloud kind of computing software stuff and you know hosting your site on certain places you have to kind of communicate and kind of be in partnership with these people even i've heard some people on the right you know having their paypals and whatnot being banned and stripe accounts because of stuff they've said you know in terms of the politics that they kind of back and all that stuff i just don't think that's the right way to go about things personally um again what who what's to say what's going to happen with this trump case um maybe he'll get thrown out in court but i think he's got the necessary amount of clout money resources network and all that stuff to really make a bit of a stink and he might enact some change but it just feels like it's a little bit too late when he was in power he should have probably put forth most of these kind of things you would have had a lot more um you had a lot more sway in maybe kind of convincing people of his argument he might have had a lot more power a lot more authority um and a lot more opportunity to actually win but now it just feels like a little bit too late personally for me but hey you know i don't blame the guy for trying to get back on social media because once you're off it especially when you're banned like the way he is it probably just feels a little bit like you are kind of shouting into the void in it and that might explain why he probably isn't out here saying the most wildest shit because there's no point saying it on your blog that no one reads in it you want to say it on the biggest platforms possible um i definitely understand where that's coming from 